All right, so this is what we're going to go over today, uh, how the math works, because, uh, you know, I like to explain that kind of stuff um, as to how things work. It's good to know. Uh, next, there will be the tune setup, then the scanner setup, uh, of course, tuning the table, and then uh, notes on scaling. Now, we're just going to talk a little bit about it because it's so specific to different tunes. Uh, we'll just cover kind of the general gist of it and then why you might have to do it. Uh, you'll see after this uh, on Gen 3s, this can definitely happen. So um, that's it. Now, that's what we're going to go over today. All right, so mass airflow sensors operate off of supplying a voltage to a heated element. So what this means is uh, the more air that flows over it, it's going to cool the element off, requiring more voltage to uh, maintain a specified temperature. That's pretty much it. Um, Ford uses voltage, GM uses hertz. Same thing at the end of the day. Um, it's pretty much the same deal. Um, you still have the same lookup table, uh, very similar. And uh, any, uh, any of them you look at, they're, they're going to pretty much be linear. Uh, more voltage equals more air. So that's going to be used for fueling and load calculations so keep that in mind uh, this is actually the fueling is actually how we're going to calibrate this um, by using the error of feeling that's how that's how we do it uh, to tell it how much airflow it actually is experiencing at a specified voltage uh, based on our fueling errors uh, this also means uh, make sure it's in the correct direction uh, clock position matters so follow the instructions whatever it says that they can be anywhere between nine and three o'clock over the top so that could be 12 or 1 or anything like that. If you have issues, try a different clock position. That, that can That's actually fixed a few uh, tunes I've heard of. Um, it also has to be located at least 4 inches from the throttle body, uh, the blade, to prevent backflow. So at lower RPM, that can be a pretty big issue. Um, also, to increase accuracy, install it in a straight section of tubing uh, when possible, away from bends. Um, and again, 4 inches at least from the throttle body. Uh, screen must be clean and free to breeze. Pretty clear uh, as to why that is. Uh, but pretty much it. So just make sure all this is a uh, is the case, and uh, we'll move right into the setup uh, here in a sec. All right. So for everything to work best, um, we're going to go ahead and tune the VE first. Uh, so we're going to put the link in the description below on how to do that uh, because I'm just not going to cover it in this video. Um, then uh, we're going to go ahead and establish a map baseline and speed density just to get us close. Um, by plotting uh, dynamic error on math frequencies while you're doing the VE or at the end of this uh, this um, process here. I'll put the link for that video as well in the description. Um, then we're going to go ahead and uh, start into actually tuning the math. So we'll re-enable the math, uh, set it at 13.5, reset the DTCs, uh, set dynamic airflow and high RPM disabled to 1, and then we'll verify that uh, all the following are still in fact turned off from our VE tune, which all of these should be disabled and or set accordingly. Um, and that's it. So uh, we'll, then we'll get right into how to tune the math. Very simple. It's actually much easier than the VE. All right, so first thing we need to do to tune the math is make sure the math is on. Uh, so we're coming out of speed density now. So we're going to go ahead and go to engine diagnostics. Um, we're going to go to airflow and we're going to go to math fail freak and we're going to set that to 13,500 hertz. Not kilohertz, just 13,500 hertz. So if you go kilohertz, then it's 13.5. Uh, but either one's the same thing. Uh, so make sure in hertz is 13,500. We come over to DTCs, click on this. Uh, we're going to go to mil on second error, set it back to the stock setting. We'll re enable the light. We'll close that out. Next, we're going to go ahead and make sure we are math only. So we'll go to engine, general, airflow. Uh, we're going to go to the dynamic tab here. And then we're going to go down to high RPM disable for dynamic airflow, which is basically basically disabling the VE table by uh, setting this number down to an impossible one like 1 uh, or something like that. Um, so we'll just set it down to 1. And now um, it will use the math for all uh, the airflow calculations. So it's kind of what we want it to do. So we'll leave it like that. Now we'll go ahead and uh, close this out. And now we should uh, go ahead and verify all our adders are still off. So we'll go to engine, we'll come over to the fuel, um, we'll go to oxygen sensors, we'll, and we'll make sure closed loop is still in, uh, disabled, make sure our LTFTs are disabled, we'll make sure our EQ ratio is set to 1 in the operating temp. Um, we are going to make sure that short term this is still disabled here. Um, we'll go to temperature control, we'll make sure that's disabled, it still is, uh, cut off, and that should also still be disabled. Um, again, all this coming out of a uh, VE tune. Uh, all this should still be off. So we're just going to leave it that way. And uh, all we're going to do uh, basically is re-enable the MAF and set the uh, high RPM disabled down to 1. 
uh, for dynamic airflow. And uh, that's it. So now we'll move into uh, how to do uh, how to set up the scanner and get on to tuning it here in a sec. Okay, so here's our scanner setup uh, required channels versus our what I'd call recommended. Uh, so you got your MAF frequency and wideband input at a minimum. We have to log these two. All right, so I have a, a, a default list pulled up here, but a note that um, it's actually my scanner's being a little weird. There's a lot of stuff on here that actually is not uh, default for a 2002 Camaro, but whatever your list pulls up, the one you're plugged into the car is what you can use. Um, and then you're gonna go ahead and add the following. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure we have our mass airflow frequency, throw that in there, the sensor, and as well as our wideband input. So we're gonna want that. Um, go ahead and select a PVI Pro or two is applicable. Um, select the input as applicable, uh, whichever one you're using. And uh, then we go ahead and transform that to our air fuel ratio, select your wideband. I'll open this up, there we go. Now we, uh, and, and again, you should already kind of know how to do this if you're at this point. Um, of course, you should all also be logging uh, your dynamic and all the other stuff that we normally would. So we add all this in just to, to recap. And we have that, we have our flow rate. We have our, uh, we're gonna go ahead and have our pulse width, uh, both banks, and we go ahead, and then we're gonna go ahead and add in our uh, cylinder and mass. And that should pretty much be a, a minimum list of uh, things that we should just go ahead and throw in. All right, so next we uh, go ahead and build a table to, uh, to actually tune our mass. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, open up the graphs layout. I'm gonna go and add a table. Um, for this one, we're gonna go ahead and select a parameter. And we're gonna go down to mass. On the bottom, uh, we'll go to Lambda and AFR, just like we do on our VE, uh, pretty much identical. Uh, we'll go AFR error or uh, Lambda, whichever you're using. Select that, um, we'll have it in percent. We'll go ahead and select two decimals for this. We can leave the filter out, no required, uh, nothing required there. Cell hits, uh, we're gonna go ahead and add in, uh, make that 50. High value, we'll make that 20. And we'll select that red for uh, lean and we'll go negative 20 for rich and i'll go ahead and make that green and uh, for the column axis we know we need the math frequency so we'll go ahead and select that uh, i got mass airflow frequency here so it's like that we'll go ahead and use the generic which is fine um, and now we need the values so we we'll go over to the tune uh, we open up the engine go over to airflow come back to general and under map calibration, we open up airflow versus frequency, and we're going to see uh, mass airflow frequency in hertz. Uh, we're going to right click the top and over here, and we're going to hit uh, column axis, copy labels, back to the scanner, and we'll paste those in here and make sure that it's in hertz as well, uh, which it is. And uh, so we're good to go now. Uh, we have our uh, if our error, which will be plotted along these uh, these values of the hertz. On a linear axis, uh, we only need the one axis because the math table is only one axis. Makes it significantly easier than the, uh, the VE, as I was saying. So um, we're gonna go ahead and see what that looks like in a log here in a sec. All right, so to apply the changes, the numbers we just got on our math, or we're gonna go ahead and select the first number we got. So it's 2625, we're gonna select here. And uh, you can either drag over or drag the mouse, um, whichever way you wanna do it. Just come on all, all the way over here. See uh, where it stops. We got corrections all the way up to 93.75, um, and we'll go ahead and hit the shift key and just click. And uh, now we have all these uh, selected all the way back. And uh, we'll hit, go ahead and copy it. Now we're gonna bring this over to the tune. We'll open up our math table. And as 26.25 was uh, where the corrections started, so we'll right, -click, uh, we'll right click here. We'll hit paste special. And in, in this case, we're just gonna go ahead and multiply by percent half. Found this does work a little bit better. Um, in some cases, uh, depends on how far it's off, um, but we're, we'll get it in there like that. Um, and uh, that should put us pretty close. So there's our correction applied. And it, uh, if you notice on the bottom, we see that our line is fairly, uh, it's fairly smooth. So we don't really have to do a lot of smoothing here on this one in this case. But if it's not, um, if you have some like erratic areas, like so, you're gonna wanna smooth them out. So if it looks something like this on your line on the bottom, and if you don't have that line, it's really easy to get. You just click on the uh, horizontal split, just like so. It'll bring it up. Um, you go to that spot in the tune here, uh, in on the uh, table. Um, we're going to select this 8250. 
So we'll go over to about 7700 here. If you do have something looking like this, we'll go 7750-ish uh, up to about 87, and we'll smooth it out just by hitting the smooth selection function and use that. So we smooth it in, and uh, that would be um, a lot closer than it uh, than leaving it that way because it's just not not realistic that it's going to be that erratic um, anywhere along this line. It should not be. Um, it should be a nice smooth line all the way to the top. Um, but that's pretty much it, how you adjust that. Uh, I will cover the short-term peel trim uh, method as well here um, right after this. But this is a, this is intended for uh, use with a wide band and because the wide bands is more accurate. Takes you up to uh, takes you up all the way into the uh, power enrichment areas as well, and we'll continue to uh, calculate the AFR regardless. And we'll show the short-term peel trim method for the, some of the other guys out there that uh, may not have access to a wide band at the moment, um, or would like to just get a uh, kind of a baseline on um, um, short-term peel trim tune uh, in the meantime before you get the car down to the shop uh, to have it um, professionally tuned or or until your wide band arrives or whatever the case may be. I will cover the method uh, very quick, very, very briefly here shortly. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's how we, uh, that's how we adjust the math. Okay, so I just want to cover a couple other methods as well um, before uh, leaving out at the end of this video. Um, and that would be the STFT method, the short-term peel trims. Um, they can be used as a temporary fix in lieu of a wideband. Uh, so it can also be applied uh, after tuning with the wideband to calibrate the map to get it closer to the O2s. Um, long-term peel trims will still uh, occur uh, so long as they're enabled. And I bring the ST STFTs within a few percent regardless uh, once reactivated. This just takes time, but it will eventually uh, learn um, the error uh, so long as both of these are active in a uh, closed loop. Um, and of course, uh, setting up to tune it, uh, so we're going to just basically uh, copy what we did earlier. Um, so we, we have to add our short-term peel trims to both banks. So we're going to leave the LTFTs off, um, and then we're going to copy the uh, process of setting up the table from earlier and duplicate if not already done. Of course, uh, we're going to have to go ahead and, and turn these short-term peel trims back on. All right, so in order to actually tune with STFTs, uh, we're going to go ahead and, and re-enable them. Uh, so to do that, we need to go to engine, we go over to fuel, and we're going to go to uh, your oxygen sensors tab here, um, go here, and under closed loop enable, we're going to go ahead and turn the closed loop back on. And in order to do this, uh, we're going to go ahead and open up a stock tune file. So uh, we go ahead and open compare file, um, we'll go to stock F body here. Now we see that this uh, table has been changed in order to find the new one, we just click on it. Um, what we need to set it back to, I should say, uh, we click on the uh, show compare file uh, in the center here, and we copy the old values, and we paste them over to the new, the uh, current tune. So now we have that uh, re-enabled. That will re-enable the short-term peel trims. Now keep in mind, you're going to go ahead and leave the long-term peel trims disabled. Um, you're not going to use these for GM. Uh, so just leave those off, and uh, now our short-term peel trims should work. Um, so now, in order to uh, Go ahead and add those into the scanner. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set up a scanner. We need to close the log and we'll add back in uh, our short term peel trims. We need to add those. So we're going to add a channel and then type in STFT. And we have to make sure that bank one and bank two are being logged. So as you see here, we log, make sure that they're there, and um, that's it. Uh, so now uh, we need to uh, set up the actual table for it uh, and all we're going to do is open our AFR air table that we uh, we made. Um, we'll go to the grass layout, go to AFR air and instead of AFR air math uh, is what we normally what you can do here is just uh, duplicate this uh, graph, you just clone it. So now we have two of the identical graphs and now we'll go ahead and uh, select the second one and we're going to go down to the bottom or actually just type in STFT uh, and we should be able to plot short-term peel trim ratio um, on the uh, label here. Um, we just type that in and under, again, show that one more time, STFT, and we scroll down to, as you notice, you want to use the one that just says short-term peel trim, the ratio. Select that, and we're going to turn that to percent. We'll set it to two decimals, and uh, now we have a uh, short-term peel trim version of this. So now we have that table built. Um, now that will plot our error along the uh, same frequencies and everything. So now we can go ahead and use those to tune the math uh, using short-term peel trims instead of the wideband. 
Um, but again, uh, highly recommend using the wideband instead. Um, if you have one, use it. If not, um, you should be ordering one and uh, it should be in the mail by now. Or if you just plan to get this, uh, get the car down to the tuner, um, to, uh, down to the shop to have it professionally tuned, then uh, this will get you there. So that's that's all this I really just wanted to cover. Uh, just throwing out another method. It's, it's uh, can be done uh, with short term fuel trims and this also applies to VE. Um, but again, not recommended because once you are in power enrichment, all short term fuel trims are disabled. But uh, so that's the method. That's all, all you're going to do is uh, basically build a, uh, another table using the short term fuel trim error and um, then repeat the exact same process. Uh, once you have the numbers, you plug them in exactly the same way. Um, and you'll find is if you get into power niche, maybe you try to go wide open throttle, you, you will not get a correction. There will be no corrections. So uh, just want to make sure I covered that. Uh, but that's it. Uh, so then we'll move into uh, what to do after uh, we do with the math. Um, set everything back to normal. And, uh, and that, that, uh, that'll pretty much wrap up the video. All right, so just a couple quick notes. I'm not going to jump too far into this. But while you're, while you're tuning your math, and if you end, ever end up hitting this limit right here, the 512 grams a second, on your uh, Gen 3 car, um, then you're probably going to have to go ahead and scale the tune if you decide to continue to use the math. Uh, so just a few notes on it, it must be done in a uniform manner as in all air tables must be adjusted the same percent. Basically anything that has to do with airflow has to be adjusted by that percentage. Um, spark tables are the exception, uh, they also have to be adjusted but copied and moved row by row to account for the different air mass calculations because the rows on the left side are in in load or basically the air mass, cylinder air mass. Uh, so what that means is that at the one row has to become the 50 row and the 50 row has to become 26. Not all of them line up. And um, you'll see that a 50% scale tune is a lot easier to do than a, say a 75 and so on, so on and so forth. Um, all scaling is uh, based off injector flow rate settings. So the higher the number, the higher the air mass will be used in the calculations. I.e. if a stock tune had 40 pound injectors before and you put in 80 pound injectors and have the 80 pound numbers in, every sing single airflow value in your tune is going to end up, after it's tuned, is going to end up being double what it was, uh, if that makes sense. Um, for more, if you see DDN Spider, uh, he has a sticky on it under LS1 Tech and um, you'll see that's under PCM Diagnostics and Tuning section, a lot more detailed on the scaling. And uh, if later if, uh, folks want me to go ahead and uh, kind of do a walkthrough on it, I could do so. Um, but for now, I was just wanted to throw it in as a mention because uh, we are talking about math and there are limits on a Gen 3 math. And uh, 512 be 512 grams a second being that limit. Um, but other than that, uh, pretty much uh, wraps up the notes on scaling. All right, so after you're done with the tune, uh, we're going to go ahead and re-enable the following tables as desired. So uh, this depends on what kind of uh, setup you want to run. Do you want to run MAF open loop? You could run v uh, speed density. If you're going to run that, I don't even know why you're here. But in any case, um, there's multiple ways you can you can run the car. Uh, so in any case, if you want to return it to the stock settings, uh, we go ahead and re-enable the DFCO. Um, this will help with the gas mileage, of course. Uh, so I su do suggest turning that one on at a minimum back on. Um, the short-term fuel trims, uh, that's going to be closed loop. Uh, you want to turn that back on if you uh, you intend to run closed loop and you want those to operate. Um, get your long-term fuel trims. Uh, if you're going to have F STFTs on, I recommend putting those on as well so it can have some learning. Um, cat over temp if you have them. Uh, of course, uh, set the open loop EQ ratio back to the stock settings. That is to increase the safety factor a little bit. So as it gets hotter, it'll add a little more fuel and it'll help you uh, with your cold starts a little more um, to help it warm up. Uh, of course, the uh, set dynamic airflow disabled back to 4,000 RPM if you intended to use the blended uh, VE and MAF system. Um, if you intend to stick with just MAF only, then leave this alone. Leave it at one or low, uh, so it will disable the VE. Um, or if you intend to use uh, speed density, then you can leave the MAF disabled and not have, you shouldn't even watch this video. Uh, but I digress. Um, so anyway, uh, after all this is done as you, as you desire, um, then go ahead and move on to uh, tuning the spark. Um, but if you want to turn everything back back on, um, then this is the list. Uh, that's pretty much it. If you got questions, leave them below or hit me up on LS1 Tech, and I'm more than happy to help you out. And uh, until then, I'll see you out there.